Welcome back to Why Is This a Podcast with me, your host, Kieran Watts. Really lovely to speak to people, speak to them about what they're passionate about, about the great work that they do. I'm really excited to talk to this great, great guy. Um, very talented musician. Um, his new single, Headlights, debuts on... April the 2nd, Um, and I've known him for a fair amount of time. Um, Please welcome Lewis Jacob Bradley. Hello, Lewis Jacob Bradley. Hello, Kieran. It's lovely to talk to you again. Yes. It's It's been been, a while. Yeah, it's been quite some time. It's, um, you used to steal my cigarettes. Yes, because I was very poor, and you used to bestow them upon me charitably i I bequeath them to you (laughs) yeah it it was a bequeathment it it was um (laughs) me 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 as a benefactor yeah charitable benefactors going here's the cigarette you may have it you got me through those those hard college days (laughs) (laughs) for those who don't know lewis and i used to study um religious studies together at uh at a level yep um Back when we were young whippersnappers. Uh, back when we were young whippersnappers. Um, we, we've obviously both now become very elderly. Yes, and extremely mature. Yes. And very sensible and serious. Uh, uh, very, very mature. So um, I'll just um, take out the fart jokes out of the monologue. Yeah, cross those out. <laughs> I'll cross those out. We, 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 no, we, won't have any, we won't have any jokes about that. Okay. Oh, I had some fart sound effects queued as well, so I'll, <laughs> I'll delete them quickly. <laughs> I'll just... I'll, I'll, I'll change the running order. I'll change the, the running order to go... Because fart jokes was um, pretty much um, first, the, the, the first 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, we can't have those now. And so now, actually, that's all the time we've got. Thanks so much for tuning in. See ya. Get back here, man. I know I had to. Um, I, I know I, I, I sent you questions. I sent you um, questions and questions with answers that I'm very interested in. Well, hopefully I have those answers for you. As I mentioned, the single headlights, it's on the 2nd um, of April. The single is headlights. Um, I was just wondering, like, music, what, what got you into music? What inspired you to get into it? What inspired me to get into music? Um, well, I had a pretty musical upbringing. Um, like, my dad played guitar and sing and, like, played piano and, like, um, my sisters both sing and like we're all always it's kind of the really sort of cheesy family singing together in the living room kind of thing um, so that that kind of always put me on like a musical path but I was never sort of pushed to do music or anything I kind of I decided to do that by myself so um, yeah when I was like 16 got into uh, got into a band where I was the singer and we were started writing songs together and um, I just knew I wanted to pursue music then so I'd I came to Cross Keys where we met uh, so I could study music uh, and music technology um, and I've gone on to university. I'm now in my third year and yeah, music has just always been a passion of mine um, and it's definitely just the career that I need to be in. I can't, I can't do anything else really. <laughs> I'm rubbish at maths. <laughs> I'm a podcast host. It's my destiny. It's your destiny, yeah. <laughs> You suit this job, though, and you really do. Do do you think about it in terms of destiny? Do you do you think, you know, um, from, from from the moment I, you know, um, came into being? Um, do you, do you yeah. think that I, 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 you know, from that moment on, I was going to be a, a music person? I was going to be a musician. I was hmm. going to. I think I'm always I'm always going to be a musician, but I wouldn't I wouldn't say something like destiny because I don't really um, I don't really think destiny is a thing. I think philosophy know, philosophy trained us well. 
Yeah, yeah. We've had these discussions before, I'm sure. Yeah, um, we, we, we definitely did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I think, you know, certain people want to pursue th- certain things. I don't think anyone is is necessarily born to do anything, but, but maybe some people are more sort of... Uh, sort of more always going to lean towards um music or art or or, or whatever um and that's purely right. environmental factors you know just your upbringing and and whatever yeah exactly ex- ex- I, i'm well, i'm with you on that where Except. I, I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> no what, what i would no what i was gonna say is i was always more the arts, more sort of you know drama, English, mm-hmm. or, or or stuff that's more abstract. Um, yeah. some stuff that's more speculative. Like as I as I mentioned, you and I met in college, and it was religious studies. A large part of that was philosophy. Mm. Well, obviously, like philosophy is, you learn about abstract thought. Well, you look, yeah, exactly. You learn about abstract thoughts. You learn about the actual physical facts about people, certain people's lives. Mm-hmm. But you also learn the, the the crux of it is you learn about their theories. Yeah. What our, our catchphrase I think was that it's obtuse. I think that was our catchphrase. It's obtuse, yeah. <laughs> and um, so 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 I I I I. I don't think it's a matter of destiny. Mm. You know, I never thought that I would get into writing or into uh, not writing, sorry, into interviewing people like mm. this. Um, so, so I get where you're coming from, but I do think it's sort of um, set up in a way. Right. Yeah. Okay. That you have your. No, you've got your talents, and then after that, it's about nurturing it. Mm. Um, we're going to get onto uh, predetermination and all that now. No, we're not. <laughs> we're, we're not because I don't have any A levels to sit this summer. Yeah, I haven't got my textbooks handy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what influences you as a musician? What influences? Or who? Who influences me? Or what? Well, who and what? Who and what? Okay. <clears throat> well, I can talk in terms of who uh, my musical influences. Uh, growing up, a lot of Stevie Wonder, um, a lot of the Beatles, a lot of Led Zepp. <laughs> um, and then sort of later into my teens, I started getting into jazz and, uh, you know, bands like Snarky Puppy, um, Miles Davis, John Coltrane. Um, and then like moving on into that, but sort of came back full circle, got really into the Motown kind of funk thing again, like Stevie Wonder. So like Earth, Wind and Fire, all those guys. Um, I've heard of pretty much all, I've heard of pretty much all of them. Yeah, yeah, basically. I, I haven't I didn't I haven't heard of Snaffy Puppy. Snarky Puppy. Snarky, Snarky Puppy. Puppy. Yeah. They are <laughs> the best jazz fusion band in the world at the moment. Uh full stop. Um very, very good. Um, but yeah, I just, I kind of, I listen to absolutely anything I can get my hands on. Anything I think is good, I listen to. And I'm sure all of those things make their way into my music somehow. Um, and sometimes I might not realise it, but, I, you know, obviously it's going to be there. When, I, when I'm asked the question, what music do you listen to? Mm, just, yes. I, kind, I kind of just want to say the kind with sound. Yeah, because <laughs> because yeah, I don't know what mood I'm gonna be in. Um, yeah. But it, it is, it, but it obviously like with different styles, different people. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need to tell you, tell you this, but it's d- different artists are gonna relate to you differently. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've been asked by people, what influences your style of interviewing mm. like, well there's a lot of them it's just an amalgamation of everything yeah. that you've learned about interviewing or or music you know mm. that that all of your experience in that is it creates your your style or you know 
And you know, and I think you pick up, and I don't know if you feel this way about your music. Mm-hmm. For me, as an interviewer, it's like you pick up. I know I'm good at this bit. Yeah, I'm not good at this bit. I'm eh, about that yeah. bit, and I, I don't know. Does that does that apply to you in your experience? Oh yeah, hundred percent. There's a lot of holes and gaps in my abilities <laughs> as a musician. Um, I know. For example, I've, it takes me uh, about it takes me about four weeks to write the lyrics to a song because that's just really not one of my strong points. But the music I can get done in like an hour or so. Um, see, I, I think I'd be the other way around. Yeah, I know you I, would. I, I, I could imagine you write, could write lyrics. Yeah, I think the writing would take me quite a long, quite a short amount of time, mm. because the you know, writing the music is so technical. Yeah. Then again, I'm obviously saying it from the perspective of somebody who's never written music. Mm. The the music would, I think, necessarily take me longer. Yeah, I think it's I'm I'm way more critical on myself um, when it comes to writing lyrics. So I'll get like five words out, um, and then like scribble them all out and start again. And it, that's why it takes me so long because I'm I'm like hypercritical of. I think it's because when when the lyrics. It's, it's almost like the music isn't really me, but like the music, uh, the, the lyrics are kind of like my voice and it's way more exposed that way. Um, so the music, I feel like I've got way more freedom to sort of express myself and just do whatever, or yeah. whatever, you know, comes comes out of my head and, and through my hands. Um, and the lyrics take, take me a while, but it's something I'm working, it's something I need to work on, you know, um, just to get songs finished faster. <laughs> it's an experiment as well. Sorry? And, and it, it, is it easier for you to experiment with actually posing the music as opposed to the lyrics? Is that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it's just because I've obviously just been playing music way longer than I've been trying to write music. You know, it's what pissed me off. <laughs> that's that's your green light, by the way, to swear. If oh, I'm okay. Swear on here. <laughs> Um, which will piss me off when people said about Bob Dylan when he won the Nobel Prize mm. um, in literature. So he's not a. He's, 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 why does he have the Nobel Prize in literature? Yeah. And I'm like, he's a writer. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, he was a fantastic lyricist. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a poet. You know, he's, yeah. he's a poet in many senses. And so. You know, comp- composition is one thing. Um, in composition, in terms of the actual music, the actual mm-hmm. melody, and everything like that, you know, and you must understand, Lewis, and mm. the audience must understand. I've no idea what I'm fucking talking about, but. <laughs> You know, the, okay, you've heard music. Preparing, <laughs> <laughs> preparing like a composition and um, the lyrics of a song is it, incredibly hard. And mm. um, I'm trying to find out where I'm going with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for me, it, you know, um, I'm, sh- I'm sure a lot of people are, are like me. I, I just find um, the actual music composition. Um, that's just easy to me, and more, more free, and it's yeah, more free. And, and writing lyrics, I think, yeah, the I think the reason I I take longer writing lyrics is is uh, just because I'm way more hypercritical. I think I give myself a break in terms of the music because I I sort of trust myself a little bit more. You know, because you know what you're good at. Yeah. What you're better at. Yeah. And you know, I wouldn't say I wouldn't necessarily say I'm bad. At, writing lyrics but like i i'm way more conscious i'm more way more conscious about it and i'm way more um Are you more, com- more worried about how how i come across you know and you're more comfortable i suppose yeah in and uh in doing music yeah obviously you're in a band um you're a performer mm. um covid19 shut all that off how how have you coped not being able to perform during COVID-19, during the pandemic? Um, it's been, well, it's been 
rough to be fair um so i, I had my band like the band was kind of like before uni and then um when i came to uni the band kind of had to stop um because we were all sort of moving on um and then like the past couple of years i've been sort of writing my own music trying to like jam with 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 people um and i was only really getting to the point where i wanted to play live again right before lockdown happened um and like my diary was full i was busy like every single day of the week um just getting stuff together for my own music and doing rehearsals and and whatever um and then that kind of put a stop to it um but you know now there's light at the end of the tunnel um my uh university like they've opened up the practice rooms again so we can we can go and rehearse i can get some band members together um and we can start uh performing again but yeah it was it was uh frustrating because i felt like i was finally getting a bit of momentum working towards um sort of putting myself out there as a solo artist which, which i hadn't really done before um and i was going to go and play all these shows around manchester and um and all that and then uh yeah, I just wasn't allowed uh, because we weren't allowed to go outside anymore. <laughs> like the ability to perform, the capacity and the facility mm -hmm. to perform is obviously crucial mm. because people perform to, ex as, as you've said, express yourself, mm. express your thoughts, your feelings, um, etc. Et Obviously, lockdowns deprived you um, of that, but then there's also just like this thing of, am I just whinging? You know, yeah. am I just complaining about something that's not very important? Yeah, I mean, you do have to be careful that you're not, um, you're not so woe is me all the time because, um, you know, I, I I found, and I'm sure everyone has found that no matter how much you've been struggling with everything that's going on there's mm. going to be hundreds of people that, that have it way way worse um exactly, so you, exactly. you've, you've got to count your lucky stars really and and just um be grateful for the fact that you know if you're in a situation where you can live comfortably still um mm. and you know not but, want to I, die. <laughs> but then, but then i'm and, and I'll, but obviously in that context i'm also there because i've you know spoken to musicians on this show before like I'm very, very conscious of how lucky I am mm -hmm. to have, you know, because I because I can do this remotely. Obviously, if you wanted to do a concert tonight or any kind of gig, you couldn't do it. So I'm very conscious that I a Zoom gig that no one would watch. <laughs> I, I obviously I can do it remotely. It's obviously just I I, I I'm hoping that we. COVID takes us as an appreciation of the importance of the arts. Mm. And, and yeah, was, I hope so. But I'm hoping for that because it's not whinging, it's going, well, A, this is my livelihood. Mm. B, I, I need this for my mental health as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that's incredibly important going forward. Yeah, I think coming out of this, um... There will be a greater appreciation for the arts um, because it is such an important part of our society. I mean, like the music industry alone is a multi, multi billion pound um, chunk mm -hmm. of the economy, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just kind of been stopped. Um, yeah. so, so there'll be, you know, it's, it's more than, I wish I could have more... faith in the, in the government that they'll do something about it. But, you know, I'm, I'm my finger, my fingers are crossed and my toes. It's, it's, more, it's, it's more than that as well, because people like think, oh, it's the arts. Oh, that's, that's Beyonce. That's the, you know, that's Beyonce, that's Rihanna, that's, um, you know, Bon Jovi. No, it's, well, the, it's art, not the, arts is, the arts is everywhere, you know. An it's artist not designed your tie that you're wearing and the, and the book sleeves behind you, you know, just everything. And the people in the, you know, the pubs and the clubs, the restaurants, the, mm -hmm. um, the people selling the bloody popcorn. Yeah. The merchandise is them. Yeah, too. they're all they're all in the industry, aren't they? They're all contributing. Yeah. I want to go to the single. Okay. 
April 2nd. That's the day. Yeah. I've mentioned it. Yep. Called Headlights. It is called Headlights. Okay. What can you tell me about that? What 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 inspired it? What's it about? What, what um, okay, so it? it's so yeah, but one of the things that sort of um, helped us sort of cope um, was just going out uh, for a drive, um, just getting in the car at night time, you know, like winter time, getting a drive through, um, singing the songs on the radio, like just you know, just just a little break from being in the same four walls all the time um and uh yeah it's it's just basically about those nights and it's um i think it's a very sort of cozy uh and comfortable sounding song very warm um and i feel like it's something probably a lot of people can relate to um but see uh the chorus um there's a there's a lyric in the chorus um which goes uh i've been here before um but i don't think i know which way to go um and that's obviously that kind of is linking with the driving kind of thing, like, you know, just sort of getting lost. Um, but I think what I was actually trying to say there is how um, lockdown has <laughs> sort of, everything's the same, but it's so, so different, you know? Um, a lot, for a lot of people, like their lives have drastically changed, um, but, but life is still going on it's kind of like in this weird sort of limbo thing. Um, and yeah, that's kind of what I'm addressing in the chorus there. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's basically about the lockdown experience really. And, and the little ways you find comfort um, with your significant other or by yourself or whatever. It's, it's a very, very interesting s sentiment. Mm purely because and I, I've never thought about it that way actually wow. where what, what we what people you know say it, it, it is COVID-19 changed everything mm. but I never thought about it um, in the sense that it changed everything but we're still the same we're still we're still we're here because because we're still in like our houses. Our houses haven't changed, with mm -hmm. the exception, obviously, of those. Everything's um, the same, but different. Tra tragically, who have lost their lives, lost lost loved ones, um, mm -hmm. lost their homes, um, but it, it it's the same four walls. Yeah, it's kind of like um, deja vu, you know. Mm. That I think that, that that's Groundhog Day. Yeah, like the lyric, I've been here before, but I don't know which way to go. You know, mm -hmm. if it's kind of like we're we're in a familiar place um that we know, but it's completely different, you know. You know, like when you're in a dream and say you're in your house in your dream, but it's not your house. Almost that's kind like, of what this whole thing has been feeling like to me. Almost almost like you're in the same room, you know it's the same room. But the walls are painted a different colour. Yeah, just something's off, you know. It's, and, uh, and that something is, you know, the global... What's an eye-opener there? <laughs> what was an eye-opener? Well, thank you. I'm glad I well, could uh, be a bit... Very of... very well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Share a bit of insight. <laughs> what else you work? What, what else have you been working on? I've been working on just music constantly um i'm actually getting into film scoring lately um uh, i'm i'm going to be doing the score for um a short film um for one of my major projects for uni okay. um so that's something i'm 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 really interested in, in getting into because uh you know obviously i i always release my own music and everything but career path wise <laughs> i think um Film scoring is something I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in. Uh, and I get a lot of satisfaction out of it because I love movies as well and I love music. So, uh, would you say film, would you say, mu would you say that all of the, like all of this, would you say that that's what sustained you during, um, during yeah. the pandemic? I mean, it, it, you can bring money in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, you're not, you're not going to get much money from, um, you know a thousand streams on spotify uh but 
if uh, if a director wants to pay you actual money to do uh, the score for his film, you know, uh, that's going to be that's going to bring put put some bread on the table. I can't wait! I can't wait to hear! I can't wait to hear that score. Well, so so what? What has this? What what was? I don't mean financially. Okay. Emotionally. Emotionally. What what sustained you through long? It's a question I've asked like, a couple of my recent guests. Yeah. You know, what sustained you? What's got you? Kept you going? What what's? Okay. Um, what, what's what's pushing you forward? So. Obviously, nowadays that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, there's an end in sight. That is a big motivation. Um, but um, mostly, it's just been keeping myself busy with music. Um, obviously, I'm really lucky that I live with another human being. I'm not completely alone. Um, so obviously, my girlfriend's been a massive help, um, just uh, keeping me sane and also making me insane at the same time. But does she have a does she have a gun like out of shot just to, <laughs> yeah, just, to yeah, yeah. just to force just to force you to say my girlfriend is the reason I do everything. <laughs> I am completely <laughs> fine and healthy and happy. I have I I did not do this interview after Against being my will. <laughs> to a chair. Um no no um she's <laughs> she's been great um so basically give, yeah. give her my love give her my love yeah I will. Um, yeah, just the her and, and and music and and you know FaceTime and my family and like my mm. my nieces and nephews and um, mm. and just it's it's mainly hope now um, because for so long it, there was no hope. Um, oh, that's a good thing. Uh, and it felt like there was no hope, especially like in the in the depths of winter. Um, oh dear. That was a that was a pretty miserable lockdown, but um, you know now. Yeah. there's something to look forward to uh, and summer's on the way and we're going to be able to see friends and family again and and go to pubs <sighs> that's just that yeah forget everything i said that's what's getting me through getting back in the pub that's it <laughs> soon i can go on the piss yes now i can go on the piss get some pints in me um <laughs> <laughs> No, it's the other stuff. It's the other stuff. I forget I said that. <laughs> um, but for for me, the 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 kind of the the, the uh, nadir. I hope I'm using that word correctly. But the bottom mm. was when you know we thought it would, well, you know, fuck off, like last summer, last yeah. spring summer. Well, we thought it was gonna only gonna be a few weeks. No, we, we know when when we thought um, I knew it wouldn't go away. Mm. I knew it wouldn't just completely disappear, but you know the, the transmission rates would slow down. Yeah, and then that didn't happen as such. I would that mm. was my low point. I think that was my kind of. Because you know that was around about the time. Yeah, we did relax things. We did sort of say, yeah, you can go out, and then it resurged, and it's just it's it's yeah. Obviously, a lot of that is to do with uh, major balls up on the uh, the whole e act to help out nonsense. Oh, which didn't I, really help things. <laughs> I never, I never, oh, I never bloody did that. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Good for me and Rich yeah. now. You you you're not able to be blamed for something you were told to do. Kiri and James Kiri and James Watts woke champion. <laughs> yeah. Lewis, lovely to see you. And you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, not a problem. We must do this again sometime. We absolutely have to. Yeah. I maybe insist. when I've got maybe when I've got an album coming out or something. It's just yeah, good, good, yeah, good luck with the single as well. Yeah, thank you. Good luck with um, um, good available luck. to pre-save on Spotify now. Link in my Instagram bio. Sorry, just a quick plug. <laughs> no, honestly, it's fine. It's it's uh, it's it's been so long. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's been just too long. Really nice to reconnect. It's really nice to um, yeah. It's been talk a... about what you've been doing. I'm glad that you're um, safe and and healthy. 
Mm-hmm. You too, man. Same um, goes for you. It was Jacob Bradley, everybody. Join us next time. I'll be speaking to author Kate Usher uh, about her book, Your Second Phase. Um, join us then, won't you? <laughs>